Now, businesswoman and philanthropist Sean Kiza, popularly known as Umam Kiza, has published a book in her memoir, Mam Kiza, My World, My Rules. She shares details about her life all the way from childhood up until now where she is. A successful businesswoman, she's also broken into the male-dominated sport of football with her ownership of Royal AM, along with her son, Andy Lempisani. Well, she joins me now to, of course, have this conversation about the book. And Mam Kiza, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hi, Domi. Hi, are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I see we're matching, and you noted yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. theme of the book is, is well on cause. Red and black. Yes, I'm wearing black, you are wearing red. We own it. We own, we own it. it. And in case you think maybe perhaps we are lying, this is, of course, how the book looks like. <laughs> you can see, of course, at the bottom of the table there. Mum Keys in My World, My Rules. Now, I remember when I saw the title, I thought, this reminds me of the same name you have for your reality show. You've documented your life through a reality show. Why was it important for you to also pen your story through this book? I think a reality show, it's current. It's what's happening on the reality. Mm. And for the longest period of time, there's been a gap. People, they, they've never known where I came from. Mm. So I had to put it in writing. And most importantly so, I wanted to deal with my past. I wanted to face my fears yeah. and deal with my fears. Mm. And uh, I think... The, there couldn't be no better way to do it rather than to pen it down. Yeah. When I opened the book, um, Dear Mama, Dear Baba, for me there was such a personal letter that you're writing to, to your late parents. I, I could see you were offloading some of those emotions that maybe you had either kept to yourself, shared maybe with your small circle, but now you're ready to, to publicly declare some of the traumas, some of the experiences you went through while your parents were alive, but also post their death. Why was it important to start with just talking to your mother and your father in their dis respective chapters? I think talking to my father, I've blocked a lot about my dad in such a way that I've never talked about my father. Mm. It was like he has never existed. I felt like he was gone too soon. As for my mom, that woman has always been my rock yeah. and my resilient, but I've never dealt with the grief of her dad. You know, when she passed away, I had to be the strongest one People that came to the funeral, they will tell you that to me it was like nothing has happened. Mm. When I went to the mortuary to go and pick her up, I went in there and I've asked to go in there alone mm. because my sister is so fragile. My younger brother is young. Mm -hmm. I'll always treat him as a younger brother even though he's old now married, but he'll forever be my younger brother. So when I went in there, that was the only time I found a moment to cry. And I think I was angry a bit. So I've decided to block everything that has happened to me. Yeah. Why were you angry? I felt like she left with me with so much of responsibilities. You know, as a child, when there's a mother, you know, you deal with everything, you send it to your mother, and mm -hmm. it's the only person that... I was able to become myself and shed tears and cry yeah. and, and, and become emotional. Sometimes we become so strong and forget that we need to be human. We mm -hmm. need to cry sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned in the book uh, that Umamui Nima Dikizela Mandela uh, sent you a message saying, please, please hold off the date because I, I want to bury my sister. W who was she as well? Who was Uma, Uma Flora Mkiza? Because there's so much she did politically, there's so much she did in business. My goodness, you shared pictures of her in action. You could see she held her own, her room. But who was Uma? My mother would always be a girl getter. If you look at me now, you know, a lot of people, they always said, I have so much of resilience. My mom, there was no, nothing that was stopping her. Mm -hmm. She will break any walls and any boundaries. If she believes in something, she will go for it and nothing will stop her yeah. from going for that thing. And I think I'm a little bit of a photocopy of my mom, yet she still loved her family. Yeah. Your entrance into business, you know, still staying with Umam Mom Flora um, Kize is because you were her business partner at the tender age of 22. You were Kusilo Group, 
business partner. You worked with Ma. Your introduction into business, how was it for you? Because you talk about how the first two years were difficult for you. But growing into business, starting there to where you are now, how was your journey in business with that foundation? I think my journey in business has never been easy. But um, I've started when I was young. If you read my book, you'll see that I've started at uh, my father's uh, farm business. Mm. When I was going back, I was a tomboy, yes, but I used to go back there and count, start to count the trucks, how many trucks have the sugar cane been taken, and I used to record it down, mm. and I used to go to my father and say, today, this is what has happened on the farm, and I used to disappear, you know, uh, try, and I think from the youngest childhood, mm. I wanted the business world. But it has never been easy, to be honest with you. Yeah. I have been to Credit Bureau before, mm. trying to find my way to the businesses, and I've fallen so many times. I have fallen so many times, yeah. but I've never given up. Mom, so that's one thing that stands out, you know, for me in the book. You, you were not um, reluctant to share those challenges. You mentioned the Credit Bureau in the book, how it was a setback for you because how are you in business and you are listed or, or in the Credit Bureau. You mentioned that you are the one that took the steps to go to SARS and say, listen, a lot is happening in my business. I'm making money too quickly. Um, there's a lot of income. Help me make sure that I'm still in the right track because of that background you have of being a chartered accountant. You entered into the world of football. You also there encountered your challenge. Why was it important for you to tell your version, your side of the story in terms of what happened uh, with the SARS matter, what happened uh, in football where you had to sell your club to uh, TTM's uh, Mr. Moraudzi and also leading up you know, to other you know, challenges that you face that one person could say, let me hold that off from sharing it in a public book. Let me just keep that to myself. I think the first step of healing is to let it all out. And for me, what I've went through, I think it will inspire any young black person there to say black child it is possible and they must understand that if they see human keys it's not that everything is always rosy mm -hmm. i sometimes go down come up go down come up they can also do it and for me telling my story if you are saying you need to tell your story you must mm -hmm. be as honest as you can possibly be so that whatever that you want to deal with as a person, it comes out the way it is. Yeah. Mm. I also have to say, because I'm trying not to give away too much because I want people to, to go through this discovery by getting the book and reading, but you also share your personal experiences with Zbathe. And I find that so interesting because in the black community, and as far as blended uh, families are concerned or adopting a child, there's some you know myths and taboos still associated. And I don't think anyone would have noticed that Usubat is not your biological daughter if you hadn't said so because of the strong bond that you share but you take us back to when she was 10 years old and when you first met her um, why was it important to also document your relationship and your your mothering and motherhood relationship mother and daughter relationship with Usubat? I think so much has been said you know the media sometimes they make a perception to become a reality so much has been said about me and and and, Sbatli and mm. I just needed people to understand, Guti, this is no show, this is not about the money, this is about the bond. A bond is something that one can never take away from. As much as I didn't carry Usbatle for nine months, she will always remain my daughter. Yeah. The bond that we've created, I've known Usbatle, the first time I've become a mother, I've become a mother to Usbatle first, mm -hmm. before Andil. So I've learned a lot from being a mother from Usbatle. The memories that we've shared from there, nobody can take those memories away. Yeah. That's why we are like this today. And, and are you as strict with Usbatle as Uma was strict with you and Uma Mnozipo? Because you tell us that Uma was like, no one is getting married here until this age, my child. You know, Uma wasn't as easy to let you uh, to marry, <laughs> even though you did meet your respective husbands, yourself and Umam Nozipo at you know, the age of 19, and you knew that this was someone that I wanted to settle with and start a family with. But Ma was just saying there are rules in this house, and you will abide by those rules. <laughs> I think that's where I differ with my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, at some stage as a child, 
some of the mistakes that we do as children, it's because we can't talk to our parents. So I've managed to do it differently. That's the only thing that I was trying to do different. I wanted to become the best friend of my kids. Yeah. I wanted them when they encourage problem, they come to me first. Because if they come to me first, mm. I will give them the proper advice. I wanted them, yes, to respect me, mm. but also to be able to bring anything that is their problem to me yeah. so that I can guide them the right way. The mother is always right. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mom is always right. You know you can always count on mom. But mom, kids, I have to say goodbye to you. Before I do, we saw so many different sides of you. Uh, why is it important for everyone to get a copy of this book? Why is it important for you? They must go and buy a book. For me, they always say information is power. Mm. Sometimes, okay, I didn't have anyone to hold my hand. But learning from other people's experiences can also create hope to people. And people, they always want to know how is Mamkize, how, what makes Mamkize. Mm. So they must go to the book. Maybe it will change one or two of people's life. But there are some of the five important points in that book yeah. that defines me. I'm sure those points will assist one or two people. Well, I appreciate you not only writing the book, but also coming and talking about it. Mom Kiza, thank you so much for your time. Sean Kiza, for joining us, uh, pinning this uh, memoir, My World, My Rules. This is, of course, the book that you can get a hold of. If you think the reality show told you a lot about Mom Kiza, wait until you actually see her pinning some of her personal experiences and lessons uh, for you to enjoy and learn from.